In this video, we're going to look at position vectors. We're going to discuss position vectors. Um, okay, so what are position vectors and why do we need them? Okay, I'm just going to try to give you a bit of a background here. Um, this video is entitled Chapter 2.7a, Position Vectors. Um, guys, if you recall, what are, we, what are we generally trying to do? We are trying to find the resultant of a number of vectors, a number of forces. If we have a number of forces acting on a body or on a particle, then what we're trying to do often is we're trying to find either the resultant of those forces or we're trying to find um, the components of those forces. Okay, so re just recall that we're trying to find the resultant of a number of forces or we're trying to find the components along specific directions. And in in um, chapter 2.4, what we saw was, I'm just going to do these small little drawings here. Um, we, would have, we would have a scenario like this. We would be working in the XY plane, so it was a, a 2D problem. And we would have, say, a force here of 100 Newton and a force there of 80 Newton. And we would have an angle here and an angle there. And then essentially, how did we, um, how did we add, add these up? We would break them up into uh, x, y coordinates. Uh, essentially, the point is, we would have a magnitude, okay, and we would, have a, we would have an angle. So remember that a force is a vector, and a vector has both magnitude and a direction. Okay, very simple, straightforward concepts. So this. Uh, if we had a force here, there would be our magnitude, and there would that angle would give us a direction um, relative to the x-axis. There we would have a magnitude and a direction. And then if we wanted to um, either do the scalar notation, we would get the x and y components, we would get the x and y components, and we would add up the x components, we would add up the y components to get a resultant. Okay? But essentially... Um, we would have a magnitude and a direction, and the direction is gi was given to us by this angle. Then in chapter 2.5 2. and 2.6, we, we moved out of, and, and remember, in this, in chapter 2.4, we were introduced to Cartesian vector notation. Okay? But what, did we re what do we remember about Cartesian vector notation? It's that... Cartesian vector notation helps us mainly when we're in three-dimensional space, okay? So, uh, in chapter 2.5 and 2.6... Sorry, the uh, phone rang. Okay, so where were we? In chapter 2.5 and 2.6, right, we are now working in three-dimensional space, y, x, and that z, and if we're given a force... We're given a force vector, okay? Um, we say now this force could again be 100 Newton, but then remember, a vector has magnitude and direction. So the, the magnitude of this force would be 100 Newton. And then in this case, in chapter 2.5 and 2.6, we were either given um, our coordinate direction angles, right? Alpha, beta, gamma, which would then help us determine the direction of that vector, or we were given the transverse and azimuth angles. Do you recall that? So the point is that in chapter 2.4 and 2.5, in order to fully define our force, we had magnitudes and angles, which would give us a magnitude and a direction for our vector. We had magnitudes and angles, either coordinate direction angles, or we had um, transverse and azimuth. Recall that. Okay, you just need to go back and look at those. The point is magnitude, and we had an angle that defined the direction. Now, guys, um, what what would happen? Okay, I'm just going to draw this again. Uh, X, Y, Z. What would happen if we were just given two points in space? Okay, and we said we had a force acting along the direction of those two points. Okay, 
So all we all we're given is a point A and a point B. And we're, we, we are told that this force acts along the line of, of those two points. So if you, if you construct a line between A and B, the force acts along that line. Okay, remember, a force is a vector. A vector has a magnitude and a direction. Say now I told you that this force F is equal to 100 Newton. Okay, so we've got our magnitude, but what about our direction? We still need to somehow define a direction, and what we want to do again is we want to convert it into Cartesian vector notation. So that, that is really what we're trying to do here. If we have a force directed along a line, we need, and all we have, for example, is the magnitude, we need to somehow use these two points to determine our direction. Whereas before, we had a magnitude and angles that helped us define our directions and give us our x, y, z components or x, y components. In this case, all we have are two points. We have an a, a, a point A and we've got a point B. And point A, let's rewrite it, at point A has three coordinates, A, Y, uh, a, X, A, Y, A, Z, and B has three coordinates, B, X, B, Y, B, Z. So, so what does that mean? So, for example, A, A could be, could have points, for example, of, say, um, say, 1, 0, 2. I'm just making this up. What does that mean? What, what does... What do the coordinates A, uh, 1, 0, 2 of A mean? What does that mean? It means that when measured relative to the, the X, relative to the origin in the X, Y, Z uh, space, I would need to move one unit in the X direction. I would need to move, move zero units in the Y direction. And I would need to move two in the z direction so one one in the x positive one now one in the positive direction of x zero in the y and then two in the z so point a which has coordinates a x a y a z is just telling me where does this point lie in space relative to the origin now what about b let's make up a value for b okay b could be Let's say it's equal to 2, 4, and 7. What does that mean? It means that in order th that point in space, if I move 2 units in the x direction, okay, 2 units in the x, then I move 4 units in the y, 4 units there. So that distance there would be 2. I would move 4 in the, in the y, and then I would move 7, 7 units in the z direction. Now, I keep saying units, but another, uh, okay, okay, let me, I'll get to that in a, in a minute. Okay, so say now we've got those two points in space, and We've just defined what these uh, what these coordinates mean. Okay, so now remember, guys. I'm just going to come back because I think we have to keep coming back again and again. What what are we trying to do? We have forces, guys. We've got forces which we are trying to convert into Cartesian vector notation because we need to add them up, we need to subtract them, or we need to multiply them. And the best way to add up forces in three-dimensional space and to find components or to multiply forces in three-dimensional space is to convert them into Cartesian vector notation. So, but, so what we've had before are forces with angles, forces with angles, but now we've got a force and all we've got are two positions in space, two points. And along the line of these two points, we have a force acting, okay? And so what we just, what you just discussed is 
uh, A has, has a, a three coordinates, B has three coordinates, what do they mean? It just simply tells us where A and B lie in space. So now, in chapter 2.7, we are going to look at something called position vectors. In order for us to get here, guys, where we have defined this force using a magnitude and a direction, in order to determine the direction, I want to impress upon you again, in order to determine the direction, we need to first work, we, we for, need to first define a position vector between A and B, okay? That, that is what we're trying to do first. We need to first work with position vectors, okay? So, what is a position vector? A position vector in, in very simple terms, tells me how do I get from A to B? How do I get from A to B? Okay, remember, A is in, this is in meters, B is in meters. So, so remember, this is a position. B is a position in space. And position is measured, I'm going to write this out in bold measured in meters, okay? So, so A is a position. Guys, position, remember the word position means it's, it's a distance, it's a length, right? And the units are meters. Um, so A is a position, B is a position, and a position vector simply tells me how to get from A to B, right, in, in space. How f so essentially, what does this mean? How far do I walk in the X? How far do I then walk in the Y? And how far do I walk in the Z in order to get from A to B? Okay? So, so we use this example. I just made this up on the fly. So position A, so, sorry, coordinate A is at position 102 and coordinate B is at position 247. So, just looking at these two, how far would I need to walk in the x direction to get from A to B? Well, I start off with 1, x equals 1, and I end off with x equals 2. So, I need to move how far? I need to move one unit in the x direction. I need to move from there, from position A to position B, I need to move one unit. I hope that that makes sense. I move from plus 1 to plus 2. So for me to go from A to B, I need to first move plus 1 in the x direction. Then to go to A, B, from A to B, then what's my next step? I need to move how far in the y direction? I need to move from 0 in the y to 4 in the, in the y. So then I need to move four, dire, 4 units in the y direction. Okay, because I'm moving from A to B, I need to um, four units in the in the y direction. Then how far would I need to move in the z direction? I would start at two, and I would end at seven. So it would be from two to seven. So I would need to move um, five units. So so how far in the in the x direction? I would, I would need to move 1. How far in the y? I would need to move 4, plus 4. And how far in the z? I would need to move plus 5. So this is just kind of the, an, an intuitive way of, of um, speaking about uh, position vectors. But the actual textbook definition is this. Position vector is given by this, um, this letter R looks like a small r, okay? And it is simply equal to the final position, say, the final position, bx, minus the initial position, ax, in the i, di I direction, plus the final position at y, minus the initial position, the initial y position, in the j direction plus the, the uh, z-coordinate at b minus the z-coordinate at a. That's in the k-direction. And remember, guys, meters. 
meters, meters, meters. Really, I must emphasize, it's meters. Position vector is measured in meters. Okay? So, so what we're saying is a position vector tells us how to get from A to B in meters. Okay? But the, perhaps the exact way of calculating it is to say the final position minus the initial position. Final minus initial in the I plus the final minus the initial uh, Y coordinate in the J plus the final Z coordinate minus the initial Z coordinate in the K. Final minus initial. So if we use this equation, again, guys, please, I am begging you. I'm begging you. Please understand the concept. Understand what is a position vector. Please don't memorize this, 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 um, this equation. Okay? I mean, you can memorize it if you, if you understand it, but it's very basic. Final minus initial. So what's the final? Two. What's the initial? One. So what do we get? So R is equal to 2 minus 1 in the I, 4 minus 0, 4 minus 0 in the J direction, plus 7 minus 2. Okay. Meters. Meters. It's in meters. So this equals R is equal to 1 I plus 4 J plus 5 K meters. Meaning, I have to move 1 meter in the I direction, then I need to move 4 meters in the J direction plus 4, then I need to move positive 5 meters in the K direction. I hope that makes sense. From there to there, gives me this position vector. How do I get from A to B? I move 1 in the, in the X, 4 in the Y, 5 in the Z. Now, what is the, the next quick thing I want to um, discuss before I end? Is what is the magnitude of R? Well, we know that it's 1 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. Square root... I'm not even sure what that is. Let's um, use the trusty calculator. This equals 6,48. Guys, again, what does this mean? Can you, can you tell me what it means and what have I missed? What have I missed? I've missed a meter there. 6,48 meters. What does that mean? This 6,48 is the length between point A and point B directly. It's that length there. If I draw a straight line between A and B, I'm going to get 6.48 meters. Okay? So in vector form, this tells me how far I move in my i, j, k directions to get from A to B. And then if I calculate the magnitude, that is the distance, the length between those two points. Okay, so just to recap, um, remember we're still trying to convert our forces into Cartesian vector notation. Before we had magnitudes and angles, magnitudes and different angles, but here we have a magnitude and two uh, coordinates, two points. So we are still trying to convert this force into Cartesian vector notation. But before we do that, and we'll get to that in the, in the next couple of videos, in order to do that, the first step is we need to determine our position vector between A and B. And our position vector simply tells us how do I get from A to B. We just discussed that. And then if I calculate the magnitude of this uh, position vector, it tells me the distance, the length between those two points. Okay, that's enough for now. We will carry on with some more examples and uh, possibly section 2.8. Cheers.